Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, will be the last time in this show that I will have a chance to speak to you as a normal citizen. The next time I will be speaking to you will be as an abnormal citizen, as your president. <laughs> I did not come here to talk about myself or politics. I am here to talk about my good friends, the Smothers Brothers. In the past two years, Tom and Dave have given me great experience. <laughs> Tonight, I would like to pay them back by exposing them. <laughs> what better place to start than in their childhood? In this charming portrait, note the clothes, simple and cute, and look at that pretty striped dress on Grandma Smothers. Immediately after this picture was taken, Grandma Smothers was returned to Chino State Prison to throughout <laughs> her turn. This turn of events left no psychological effects on the boys. Except in later years, Dickie refused to grow a neck. <laughs> and insisted on wearing grandma's glasses. Tommy, on the other hand, found his release in sports. He quickly assumed this one-arm handstand on the parallel bars and rigidly held this position until grandma was released. <laughs> Dickie, too, found an emotional release in sports. Here we have uh, Dick doing the famous track event, the Standing Redondo. <laughs> the With this psychological background, the boys are more than adequately prepared for launching their career in show business. And their first big break came on the Ed Sullivan Show. Their bitter early years prepared them to, to do satirical comments and scathing social satire. Their pungent humor was razor sharp. With power and passion and purpose, you sing it about a driving, John Henry. A driving man. <laughs> Drive on, John the Great! Fix giant of a man! <laughs> when John Henry was my shoulder sitting on his daddy's knee. His daddy picked him up and he threw him on the floor and said, This baby's wet all over. Now, with that kind of taste and sensitivity, <laughs> others, other offers came fast and furious. Heavyweights like Andy Williams found it especially exciting to exchange intellectual thoughts with his brother Smothers. Tommy, now why'd you do that? I want him to introduce us. Oh, for Christ, Alfred. Else. Uh, what's the matter? My brother doesn't think you introduced us. Can well, I introduced you earlier in the show. Besides yeah. that, everybody here knows you. Not that's oh, not everybody knows us. So I got a lot of t I've got um I got about five letters to my house just addressed to occupant. <laughs> Deal. I get letters addressed occupant too. I get lots of them. See, nobody knows you also. Nobody knows you one of us if you introduce us. Well, all right, all right, I'll give you an introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the occupant brothers. <laughs> and who can forget that momentous day when Tom decided to go dramatic? The world waited breathlessly as Gary Moore gave Tommy his first big acting role. I want some cooperation. Yippee, I, I, oh, get a My pleasure to pay tribute to two highly talented artistic performers who are stars of their own television show. A show that has been critically hailed, universally acclaimed for its brilliance and its all around creativity. Without further ado, let's bring them out and really hear it for these two great performers. As it may, we're running a little late tonight, so we'd like to thank our guests, Rowan and Mark. Say goodnight, Dick. Goodnight, Dick. Who are the two dummies up there? <laughs> 
see how hard our show is to do, don't you? <laughs> Look that up in your funkin' Wagnall. Sock it to me. Uh, very interesting. Here comes the judge. Bippity boo. How about that? Well, that's not funny. I know it's not, but it sure is successful. <laughs> Same to you, fella. Uh, our guests for next week will be Kate Smith, Jefferson Airplane, and Mason Williams. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Also appearing on tonight's show with Bob Einstein, Carl Gottlieb, and Murray Roman. This is Roger Carroll. Thank you.